Take us in. Someone. All right, I'll do it. It's the official podcast, episode 290. We're creeping ever closer to that beautiful 300 milestone. And the boys, they're out of topics, so it's up to me to bring some fire. Have you guys seen Radio Shack's Twitter? Yes. Yes. What and? the fuck is no. happening? Isn't it great? <laughs> yes, and? It's, it's bad. <laughs> yes, and. <laughs> It's it's pretty fucking uh, pretty fucking cool actually I would say <laughs> for those that don't know Radio Shack came back from the dead to shill some NFTs in their crypto token of course as Stan Lee once did mm-hmm. and they went on Twitter and hired like one of their edgy teenagers to run it for them so they tried to do what Wendy's does with dunking on people but a little edgier so one of the people they targeted was Coffeezilla. And they were laying the smack down on him. They hit him with a D's nuts tweet and then double A batteries for your vibrator, pussy. And last night, they must have got embarrassed or had a word from up the the food chain at corporate because they deleted every single one of their tweets. Yeah. Was it a rogue agent, maybe? Maybe it wasn't even sanctioned. No, it was definitely sanctioned. It was like Jason Bourne. No, that was... off the grid at Radio Shack. If they got hacked, it would have immediately devolved into racism and shit. It was like calculated edginess. There was nothing offensive or problematic they tweeted. But how is that edgy? What? How... How many other company Twitters do you see starting shit with YouTubers calling them pussies? Let me let me give uh, you an, well, a guess, more edgy one that though. I saw. They also were uh, attacking Mudahar, some yeah, ordinary Mudahar gamer. Another one. And at one point, he, Mudahar said, like, like they were they were in the midst of it, and Mudahar was like, "Oh, that's not really a good comeback. You call that a comeback?" And Radio Shack said, "When I want my comeback, I'll wipe off your mom's chin." Yeah, and it, it's like they were, they were going hard. So okay, okay, yeah. yeah. I can see, I can see how you, that could potentially encroach into edgy territory. Well, you got to remember, this is a big, well, former big fucking brand yeah, name. It's, you no, know? it's like three guys now. Yeah, it's not a big brand anymore. But, well, I, didn't, I didn't know this. Maybe you did, Andrew. Did you know they still have actual locations you can go and shop at? No way. Yeah, Bullshit. I had no, no clue. I had no clue. Real? Who? What's the point of a That's Radio quaint. Shack these days to buy batteries? I, I don't know. So from what I like heard, Radio Shack only sells exactly what they sold right before they died. So it's still like <laughs> walkie talkies, and, yeah, walkie talkies, <laughs> and like Nokia cell phones. I guess I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like you go in there and just get insulted by the one guy working there. That would yeah. be a pretty good business model, like <laughs> Jesus fuck. I Imagine. had no idea. Can you imagine applying for Radio Shack to stand at the register and shit? Oh, that'd be so awful. What a terrible, terrible existence. But that'd be a great job. Like, no one goes in there. You'd be fine. Is the final, so boring. Is the final Radio Shack still standing? Kind of how the final Blockbuster is still standing because it's part of a pizza restaurant? It's, it's not even the final... Well, also, I don't think Blockbuster is part of a pizza restaurant. The last one, isn't it? It's standalone. I think it's the whole point is it's also got a little pizza restaurant window in it, and uh, that's how they stay afloat because you order pizza there while you rent <laughs> movies. That might be it. Yeah. No, so Radio Shack actually, according to their site, has 400 usable locations still in the U.S. What? Huh? 400. Yeah, 400. That's a lot. That it is, is a lot. That is actually a lot. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. So, and also another thing I found out, Ty Lopez, the, hey, look at the Ferrari in my garage guy, owns Mm -hmm. uh, Radio Shack now. He, he like, bought the license to Radio Shack or some shit. A license? I I don't even know how they're still alive. Like, I I would understand if they evolved with the times, but there's just so much competition like Best Buy and Amazon now. How the fuck? It doesn't have the prestige. Like, you, you say Radio Shack, you don't think of anything, really. Or at least I don't. (laughs) No. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's nothing. It's <laughs> nothing in my head. I just think of the Kung Pao reference, and that's it. Is I don't even know any of these, like... Oh my, the internet has killed so many brick-and-mortar stores where... Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about this mm-hmm. when I was... For the first time in my life, I saw a GameStop, and I decided to go in with my girlfriend, and we were both like, why even does this exist? You know, you can't get all of this online. All of the games, first of all. Sure, I remember one de- of the what? first arguments that we had on the show was about if uh, like digital will actually overtake physical media. That was like five years ago now. It absolutely has. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. Like, and people and people close. shit on us for that. Yeah. They were like, "What are you talking about?" There's no way. I love owning There'll physical things. There'll always be a place for brick and mortar. Always. You can't get the same tangible knowledge 
that you can no. in online that's you so can't brick and well, mortar. To be fair, they got some artificial help through the COVID and all the physical locations being shut down while Amazon True. and such weren't. So all of that wealth just moved up to fucking Amazon from mom and pop shops. But True. yeah, it was a little depressing because again, I was in... So this is where I felt a little sad because I was in Amsterdam and they have these street shops, these bazaars where they sell all sorts of stuff. And one of them was a flower shop with like um, flower seeds from all over the world. And and I thought for a moment, like 30 years ago, this would have been the most amazing shit on earth for me. You know, so much stuff that I don't get to buy at home. But now it's like, yeah, I can just go to Amazon.com. None of this matters. But you at know, the same time, you gotta this isn't look. Special. You still have to look at it as it is special because imagine how much easier importing and finding and discovering those seeds for that shop was thanks to the internet and international trade. Like that shop yeah, may not exist probably. twenty years ago; it might not have been feasible. Were there many people know, around but... that shop? Oh yeah, I mean the street. Oh my god, Amsterdam is so fucking packed. It's like a can of sardines. Just the entire city. <laughs> it, it was. They make mad business. Yes, I was just saying that when you go in, it's like, it's just not that special anymore. Unfortunately, I do think that Amazon has killed that somewhat. Or well, maybe it's special, gone. and you just don't know anything about flowers. Maybe those were like <laughs> magic beans in there. That's why everyone was around. I don't know. I think you can get pretty much anything online at this point. You can, yeah. I mean, why yeah, even I go, mean, like, hunting yeah. for any... Used to be the... If you wanted something very specific, you'd have to go from store to store, you know? And it, maybe you'd have to talk to a specialist to have it imported or whatever. Now what do you do? eBay.com. Got that's it. A, oh, no one uses eBay. That's a good topic. Yeah, though. We, can, we can extrapolate from that. Have you guys had any recent specific or interesting internet purchases that you normally wouldn't have even thought of? I bought Wave Runner... Uh, the original N64 Wave Runner game, like box and all, just because I really wanted to have it. So I got it on eBay for like 30, 40 bucks. That's it? Was it yeah, like sealed? Cheap. No, no, it's not sealed. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so you weren't even doing okay. it for like a collector purpose? Why don't you just emulate? Oh, no, no, it is a collector purpose. Uh, I put it on my. Well, it's unsealed. Like what do, you, what do you mean? It's un Yeah, there's no plastic on it, but it's still like the box and the game inside of it. I don't I don't need the plastic shrink wrap on it. I don't Why don't really you care. just print the cover on like something then? You could have saved money. Did you play I, it? I could have I saved time by just buying it instead of making an arts and crafts project. Uh, did, you, did, you actually, time, uh, did you actually did you actually play it? I mean by it? that logic you could also just shrink wrap it. And have yeah, it be exactly. Done. No, that's a lie. That's fake. You can shrink wrap your fucking printed paper then as well. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And yeah, the reason I got that is because that's the first video game I ever played. And I made like a little shrine to my favorite games and consoles. Aw. That's yeah, kind of that cute. cute. That is yeah. cute. But you didn't that's actually cute. play it, did you? Oh, no, no, not since buying it. No, still in the oh, box. Oh, man, you got to open that up and start playing it. Come on. Maybe. Maybe but wait, one day. That's so, that's so confusing. It's a shrine... But you didn't go out of your way to get a like a mint condition sealed thing. No, why not? Jack. Why? Because I'm not having it graded by anyone. It's for me. I don't need it to be like a Star Wars collectible that you have, like still wrapped up beautifully in its box. As long as it's there. So, but yeah, like, but then you're like halfway between an actual collector and someone who actively plays the games. It's it, you're in a weird limbo. Yeah, uh, I, I'm uh, in the the smart limbo where I if I wanted that fucking like perfectly sealed, it's like three hundred bucks, which is not worth it. It's such a waste of money. It is. I'll just get it without the plastic on it. Play the game. I'd feel more comfortable yeah, if you played the just, game, please. Just play it once, and then we'll all feel better. Okay, yeah, yeah play I'll, it for me. I'll yeah. bust that bad boy out one time for Jackson and put That'd it back on the shelf. <laughs> oh, nice what's, it, what's it on? What's, uh, what's the game? In Wave Runner uh, on or Wave Race on N64, first game I ever uh, okay. played. It's a good choice. Is it a good game? It was a good game actually. A lot of people used to like this game. It was pretty fun. It's a jet ski racer, and you mm -hmm. can do some cool tricks on it. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, I know this one. Um, what other games do you have in your little shrine then? Ooh, I got a lot of bangers. So I've got Psychonauts, of course, Power Stone for my Dreamcast oh. section. <laughs> yeah, Sonic oh. Adventures there as well. Charge and Blast is another one you know I what? put there. I used to love that. You know what the best thing about Power Stone was? When you hit someone really hard and they lost their Power Stones and the announcer would go, Oh, no! 
Oh you god! You all the that? voice, yeah, all the voice lines in that game were so good. There was one <laughs> character where every movie made you go, "Ucha!" <laughs> every single time. It Did was you ever play so Power good. Stone Two? Yep, that's also on there. Fucking excellent.